to the tin barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee, and today we've got another little project that involves yet another pallet. You've seen me on previous video made this pallet uh, to use on the uh, lathe, and I'm sorry, to use on the mill uh, straight down on the table, and also set up with the four holes to mount it on the rotary table, and this radius on here is the right size to rotate on that. In a previous video, you also saw me make these mounting bolts for the faceplate on my lathe. Several folks made some good comments on that video. I was actually surprised with the number of views that it got uh, since it uh, was applicable just to something on my lathe. But uh, a couple of comments were about probably need to test for run out on this. Uh, in that video, I did, <clears throat> excuse me, I did turn it on and felt just a minor bit of vibration in the lathe uh, when I got it up about 600 RPMs. But uh, after the comments, I went back and checked the face of it itself. Uh, and I was very pleased that there was only just a little over one thousandths run out on this nine inch plate. So I was pleased with that. However, on the outside, there's about twenty thousandths run out. And that's where I'm sure I was getting that little bit of vibration. So that's going to be part of today's uh, project as well, is to clean up the outside of this. But what I'm going to do, as I say, this is a nine inch. I believe it's nine inches. nine and a half inch diameter. Let me ease the camera down just a little bit. I've got a 10 inch piece of aluminum here. 10 inch square by half inch thick. Now I'm going to make a pallet similar in design to this one, but we'll mount on the face plate. First thing I'm going to do is lay it out. My lathe has 11 inch swing and I've actually checked that and it's of course the radius on that would be five and a half. I've actually got about five and seven eighths radius, radius on there. So I should be able to get the full 10 inch swing on this. Of course I'll have to carry it over to the bandsaw and remove these corners first. But what I want to do or what I'm going to do first is lay out the circle on here that will match this and then lay out the hole patterns. On this one I put the holes uh, 750 thousandths on center, three quarters of an inch on center. I believe for the lathe one inch will be plenty sufficient uh, and what brought this about as well in the video where I made the uh, my grandson's uh, battle axe for his birthday present. If you notice when I was holding that piece of stainless in the four jaw, four jaw chuck, it was way off centered. Uh, and I was only able to get up to about 40 to maybe 50 RPMs on that before the machine uh, started shaking too bad. And I think that's one of the things that made it uh, somewhat difficult to bore. Of course, I realized it was stainless steel, it was hard. Uh, but I had a very difficult time boring those two holes in there. With having a pallet on there, even though it's off-centered, I've got plenty of space on here to bolt some counterweights. The problem with bolting it just to this is you've only got three, six, you've eight places. Pretty big piece, pretty, a pretty big piece can be mounted on there, fairly simple. But I've made a good supply of the uh, hold down toe clamps. Let me grab them right quick. And again, if you follow my videos, you've seen where I made these, the toe clamps. I've got two, four, six, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. I've got 12 of those made up. 
So I feel like it would be much simpler to hold something off center on the lathe uh, with a tighter bow hole pattern and also be able to uh, uh, easily mount counterweights on there. So I'm going to get this, well first off, one more comment. The center hole in this is two and three quarters. I'm not going to start with a center hole in the plate that big. I'm going to probably just start with about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter, inch and a half hole in the center. If a project comes up where I need a larger hole in there, I'll just bore it out at the same time, same time I'm working on the project up to this diameter. So I'm going to start laying out the pallet now. And to find that center, just simply going to go from corner to corner. Now I'll use my set of dividers just to scribe a line for about as large a diameter as I can get out of this piece. All right, that gives me the confines to work within to lay out the rows of holes. I'm also going to lay out the, uh, the center hole in there. And for right now, I'm just going to lay that out with a one inch diameter. And I'll just not put any holes within that circle either. Now my mill table is a, has a 7 inch travel on the Y axis. This is going to be 10 inches across here. So I can't do it in one setup. So what I'm going to do is run the center row. Uh, I'll set this up on, on the uh, table. Run the center row and to one side. Then move it over on the lathe table so I can reach the other. I can reach about 7 inches of this but not the full. So I'll bring you, bring you back when I get that set up. One other thing before I set up over there, to mount this pallet to the face plate, of course it's going to be counter, uh, counterboard uh, quarter 20 bolts, quarter 20 socket head cap screws, just like I used for the uh, four holes on here. So what I want to do is get this pretty much in place. Of course, the face plate has got long slots in them. I've made some marks in there to kind of center this up. And now what I want to do is just mark on the cross line the area where I'll be putting those four mounting bolts on that. Here, 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 and here. I mark those just so that I don't drill the quarter 20 holes in those areas, just for appearance's sake. So in that center, uh, I'm going to go ahead and punch down where the mounting bolt will be. I've got the plate uh, mounted on the mill table now, and as I said earlier, I'm going to have to do two setups on this. I measured my travel on my table, and I've actually got enough travel uh, on the table itself to get that distance. But where my problem was to work on this side over here, trying to go back, this overhang was preventing me from getting it all. So I'm going to have to do two setups, but no big deal. What I've done, uh, I, while I had this over on the bench, using a square, I put a, a couple lines across there. And of course, I had the diagonals to find the center as well. But what I've done is put that center in there and held this in place 
and on that scribe line right there, just ran it back and forth on the y-axis until I had this piece square with the table, square with the axis. So when I have to move it, I can do the same thing. Now what I'm going to be using is this same combination uh, drill and tap that I used when I created the other pallet. And if you remember, I said that this was not one that comes from a local hardware store for six or seven dollars. All the uh, all the reviews I read on them was they lasted a couple of holes and then broke. This one came from McMaster Car and I think was was close to twenty dollars, but it has already drilled and tapped over two hundred holes, so I think it'll work on this. I've got the uh, DRO set to. Uh, uh, zero on both axes now. And these red dots right here are where I w don't want to put a hole within, say, a half an inch of, or maybe even within three quarters, because there'll be a counter bore in that to mount it down on the faceplate, the lay faceplate itself. This center in here, too, I'm going to try to stay away from that. So I'm going to go. Uh, on this axis, the first hole, there was the one inch, and that's right close to, uh, to where I said I'm going to bore out. But if I have to bore any more than that, uh, it will take in this hole as well. So I'm going to put everything in low range, low one and be right ready to, to pull out once the tap catches. All right, now that tapped all the way through. So what I'll do, I'll just continue stepping over the DRO one inch in each direction Again, uh, staying away from these mounting holes. Do that on this line, move the y-axis an inch, and do the same thing. Uh, basically the same stuff I did with the other pallet, so I'm not going to try to video all of that. All right, I've got all the holes drilled in this side as much as I can. I got two more rows to do, two more short rows to do after uh, I get it turned around. But before I turn it around, I want to drill the four or the three mounting holes on this side. And 2.25 inches is a good nominal number that uh, lines up with the uh, lines up with the uh, holes in the face plate. And I'll use the counter bore. All right, now I'll do the same thing. Sorry, it was 3.25, not 2.25. All right, I'm going to get it turned around now. So I can get these other two rows and then I'll bring you back. Okay, all the holes are drilled now, including the four mountain holes, drilled and tapped. Uh, what I'm going to do before I, before I leave the mill is uh, use this counter bore or countersink and just clean off, clean up the edges of each one of them. And then I'll carry it over to the bandsaw and my scribe line that I put on there before, cut off the bulk of this. 
Then we'll go over to the lathe, and over at the lathe, first we'll get the uh, faceplate rounded, uh, trued up. Then we'll mount this on it and get it matching the faceplate. All right, I'm going to continue that process for both sides for all the holes. Okay, I've got the faceplate mounted on the lathe now, and I've got the indicator sitting here. I'll try to shade it so you can see. This is on the outside. And as you can see, there's, let's see, it's about 18 thousandths run out on the face there, or on the outside, which I think may have, of course, be accounting for the little bit of vibration I was feeling. So now I'm going to see if I can uh, get the indicator over where you can <coughs> where you can see what the face looks like. I'm going to bring that right in on the innermost ring. I'll lock the carriage down so that it's, so I'm sure that it's not moving. Let's see. Let me see if I can get the uh, camera to where you can see the indicator. All right, that's dead on zero there. And there's about a half a thousandths right there on the inner part of the ring. Now, if I bring it out, don't know whether you can see that or not. See if I can get it over here. But it looks like maybe one thousandths run out on the very outside. Honestly, I don't think I can do anything to to make that any better. So, but I do think we can get some of this out of the outside out here. So I've got a tool that'll reach over there. Again, let me, let me back the camera up some. I've got my uh, compound turned at 90 degrees on here, or actually perpendicular to what would be the workpiece. And I ran into a situation where a tool would not reach back here, a normal turning tool. It will turn, it will reach to the edge of it. So anything we do with this new pallet, it would work on that to trim that pallet. But I'm bumping my apron itself down here is bump, bumping the clutch mechanism. This lathe has a built-in clutch. So I'm using this facing tool and I've got it extended out there right good ways. And normally if I'm turning cast on the lathe, I'd put some kind of a uh, rag down there to catch it. But that, this is just mighty close under there and I just don't want to take the chance of uh, catching a rag and go slinging everything. So. We'll see how this does to turn that. Just that little bit, I can tell a difference in the vibration on the lathe already. We've hit about half of it, so I'm just taking small cuts at a time. Still one little spot right up, right up here. All 
All right, I really think I'm getting some tool deflection here. I'm going to pull that tool in as much as I can and then try it uh, a couple more passes. Okay, I turned the, uh, the uh, tool around in the tool holder and got it facing the piece a little better now, addressing the piece. So I believe this will be a final cut here. And then we'll put just a little bit of polish on that outside. It appears there's one little low spot right here on there, but it's it's not enough to keep going after. Take a piece of scotch bright now. I'm gonna turn the lathe in reverse. All right, that feels good. I'm comfortable that that's round now. Actually, what I'm going to do is take the uh, face plate back off the lathe, carry it over there to the workbench, and mount the um, the pallet on there. I've got the corners cut off on the bandsaw and got it rounded, but for having enough finger space back here and to get it reasonably centered on there, I'm going to carry it over to the workbench. Once I get it all turned down to match each other, I'll put an index mark on the uh, pallet faceplate, and there's already one on the spindle. Okay, I reckon you want to see the fruits of the labor here. Remember that was 20 thousandths or 18 thousandths off before. And other than a little bit of noise, and the roughness of it, it's within a thousandths right there. So I believe that was a success. Okay, the pallet is mounted to the faceplate now. I've got, before I took the uh, faceplate off of the uh, uh, lathe, I did put an index mark up here on it that corresponds with the index mark on the spindle itself. Once this gets turned, I'll put an index mark on this as well. Got some very, very close quarters now until I, until I get some of this edge, outside edge knocked off. So I'm going to take it pretty slow and easy to begin with here. You probably can't see it in the video, but all this extra that's out here around this outside edge is will bump the carriage uh, tracks if I'm not careful. So that's why I'm taking it, uh, uh, being extra careful and watching what I'm doing here. Once I get some of this taken off, it will be able to go all the way up just like it did under the face plate. Very, very close to having a circle. Got one little flat right here. But I'm going to take it down enough. Well, it will clear now. Hmm. Okay. It clears the. Uh, got a little bit of rubbing there, but by the time I get it a circle, it'll clear these. Uh, the. Uh, uh, carriage. All right, that is all the way around. I'm going to make a, a clean-up cut here of about 10 thousandths, and then we'll chamfer it. Okay, right now, before I forget it, index on the spindle, index mark on the... Uh, Face plate. Now 
And if I ever have to take that off of it, it'll be, I can put it back in and it should be round by centering everything up. All right, I'm gonna get the drill in and we're gonna put a, a center in here and bore that out to, a, to about an inch, I think. All right, I've got the uh, drill in there now. I started the center in there and I've got the 5 8 so I'm gonna drill that on through and then put the boring bar in. We'll see how this insert works. I was actually using, tried that insert some on that hard stainless steel. Well, we'll see how good it still is. Be sure everything's gonna clear. All right, that looks like it's gonna clear fine. I haven't quite learned yet to uh, watch the battery indicator on my wireless microphone. That's why I lost some of the audio in the last little segment on this boring. But all I was doing was boring out a starter hole. It's a little over an inch. Uh, let's see. About a 1.2, I'm sorry, 1.1 inches. Just a, a hole as a starter. If I need to go bigger as time progresses, different projects, I can always bore that out more, but it uh, be kind of difficult to put it back. So what I'm going to do now, uh, and one other thing I was mentioning in, in there too, some of my counter bores were not quite deep enough uh, to get the, these mounting bolts below the surface. So I removed these screws one at a time, deepened that counter bore a little bit, and got them back in there. Now let's check the run out on this and see where we are. Find a spot that I can go all the way around on. And you probably won't be able to see the indicator now, but take my word for it. All right, there is, let's see, let me get to that high spot again. All right, there's about five to six thousandths run out right there. Let's come in on the inner ring. And that's about two thousandths on the inner ring. So what we're going to do, we're going to take just a moment and, and take a nice slow facing pass on this. and try to bring that down to the, uh, uh, to make it good and perpendicular with the cross slide. So, I lock the carriage down. There is a good clean face all the way around there. I'll grab my deburring tool. I think that's going to be 
a worthwhile addition to the faceplate. There's one more thing I want to do before I uh, call this project complete. I'll meet you over at the uh, mill and show you what that is. All right, one more little task I want to do on this faceplate pallet combination. As you saw in the video, I went to a little extra effort trying to uh, get everything centered up uh, with the index marks and so forth with the spindle. But the, the fact that these mounting holes right here are, of course, bigger than the quarter twenty screw that I'm using, should I ever take this off, there'll be a little play in there in putting it back together. And it's not a big deal, but everything is balanced now. So what I've done is marked three spots, uh, just estimating a third the distance around. And I'm going to use some spring pins, 332nd spring pins. I'm going to drill a little hole in these three spots, drive that pin in there right up next to the faceplate. Like I say, I doubt I will ever take this pallet off the faceplate. It'd be so much it'd be so much simpler to mount stuff with these holes with the clamps that I've already got made up than it will be to try to uh, use these big holes. That's one of the reasons I haven't used a face faceplate before, just not having anything uh, really to clamp with except the the big mounting uh, clamping bolts I had for the uh, mill. So I'm going to slide this through here and ju again just line this up. Some sticky aluminum. Now I'll just take one of these drive pins. That's the only 332nd bit I've got in the house, so I want to be careful sliding around that. All right, I'm going to do that to the other two places, and I think we'll call this project done. Hope you've enjoyed this, and if you'll stick around with me on the channel, uh, not the next project. There may be a couple of projects ahead of what I've got in mind, but I do have an upcoming project where I'll be using this, and hopefully we'll all be able to see how much easier it is to clamp something to the faceplate. So take care, and I'll see you on the next video.